In this video, I'll demonstrate how we can prepare samples with standard double tilt standard and double tilt beryllium TM holders for Joel microscopes. So I'll be showing both sample loading and unloading. And everything I show is applicable also to fib sections as well. So first off, we need to gather supplies. Um, depending on the scope you use, those may be different. We'll need tweezers, your sample, of course. Vacuum tweezers are optional, but I find them to be very useful. And some toothpicks and a binocular scope to help you see what you're doing. So first, let's start with the single tilt holder. Um, this one only tilts in the X direction and is good for most samples for imaging. So here's our holder. In some cases, we do take the blade off. So if your lab does that, this is the process you'll use. So put your blade in the little holder, unscrew the screws, then use tweezers to move the metal piece out of the way, just swing it to the side so that the hole isn't obstructed. Drop your grid in, um, at whether a mesh grid or a fib section grid, and then move the metal plate uh, back in place. Make sure it's seated properly. Screw it back in, being sure not to over tighten. It's easy to over tighten these, so try not to do that. Now we need to put the blade into the holder itself. So to do that, we're gonna grab a little metal rod that comes with the holder and put it in the hole there on the top. Now, if you grip uh, the holder rod, you'll be able to see that there's a little pin when we pull it back. So we want our blade, the hole at the end of the blade to fit into that pin. Now you do wanna be wearing gloves when you're doing this because you're whole, touching the, the sample rod. So we just want that hole to fit in the pin nicely and then we just drop the lever. Now we wanna make sure that it is grasping it and so I'm just tugging on it. It'll move side to side a little bit and that's fine. It's that you don't want the blade to be able to come out. So this is what it looks like when the sample is seated properly. The last thing to do is to check the innermost o-ring. You could check both o-rings, but really the innermost is essential. Any lint and dust to remove with a toothpick. Now, once you're done, it's the same process in reverse. So we're gonna go ahead and take the blade off of the holder, and you can use your hands. I'm using thick tweezers here. And then we're just gonna put it, the blade in its little holder. Same deal, we'll loosen the two screws. Move the metal piece out of the way using some sharp tweezers. Pick up your grid. This is where I use the vacuum tweezers. Put that in your sample case and then move the metal piece back in place, seat it properly tighten the screws, being sure not to over tighten them. And then you can just put the blade in whatever storage device you use. Now, as I mentioned, some labs will leave the blade on all the time. So if your lab does that, it's a little bit more difficult to load the sample, but it is quicker. So in that case, just loosen the two screws and you wanna loosen them enough that you can actually move it out of the way because you see I'm, I'm stuck here because it's getting stuck on the metal piece at the end there. So that's the tricky part because it barely moves out of the way. But then you would load your sample just like I showed before, tighten it, etc. Now let's talk about our double tilt standard holder. This is good to use for something like diffraction where you need to tilt in both X and Y. So with our double tilt holders, we have the ability to lock the holder with a screw. And so if you have that ability, I highly recommend it. So in this case, we only have one screw. We're gonna loosen that a few turns, use some sharp tweezers to just move it out of the way. And then we'll bring in our sample and drop it in place. 
make sure it's seated properly. So here you can see it's not, so I'm just nudging it with the tweezers so that it falls into the hole nicely. Now just move the metal piece back over and also make sure that's seated properly and then just tighten that one screw. Again, being sure not to over tighten. This is the properly seated sample. Again, we want to check the innermost o-ring for any lint or hair and remove it with a toothpick. Once we're done, it's the same process in reverse. We loosen our screw. We move the metal piece out of the way. Here I have to use vacuum tweezers. So I'm pulling the sample out of the way, putting it in its holder or case, move the metal piece back in place, seat it properly and screw it down. Now for the double tilt beryllium holder, this is good if you plan on doing EDS and uh, it's also helpful if you're gonna do diffraction. So this is another double tilt holder, so I'm just locking it in place. And now we have two screws, so you want to loosen both of those a couple of turns. And then move them out of the way. Bring your sample in and drop it in place. Make sure it's seated properly. You can see it's not, so I'm just nudging it. And now we have a beryllium spacer that we're gonna put down first, make it seat properly, and then the beryllium cap. Now you need both of these, because if you don't have the spacer, your sample's gonna move around and that's not good for the microscope. So now I'm just moving the little flaps back in place. And there are these little notches that these pins need to fit in. So make sure you do that. And this is a properly seated sample. Now again, let's check the O-ring for any lint or hair and get it out of there if it's there. Now for unloading, same, same deal in reverse. Loosen our screws, a couple of turns, move the metal pieces out of the way, remove the beryllium cap, the beryllium spacer, and in this case, I accidentally grabbed the sample as well, so that's fine. Now move the little flaps back in place, make sure they're seated properly and then close the screws. And for, for our lab, we actually keep the beryllium spacer and cap in these little gelatin capsules. That way they, we don't risk them falling out in a vacuum pump that we use to keep our, our sample rod in at all times. So. I'm just putting the beryllium cap back in its little gelatin capsule and then its container and then the beryllium spacer as well. Now, if your lab doesn't do this, obviously you wouldn't do that, but. And that's it. So now you know how to load and unload samples on three different types of Joel TM holders.